Okay, so the first tell us your, your name and uh, and what you do. Charles Bell is my name. Nickname's Cheater. I do anything from mechanic, machine, welding, pilot service, aircraft mechanic, construction work, and uh, we do wildlife rehabilitation. And also, I run a little ranch. So, how is it that you and uh, Don Shapiro uh, know each other? How long has it been, and what's the nature of the relationship? I flew him up, I guess, to Amarillo once, but that had to be back in, a, I don't know if that was in 2000 or 90, do you remember? Probably in the 80s. Uh, too old for me, that's probably my father. Late 80s. Levi Strauss had a huge plant in Amarillo, and with a lot of equipment, a lot of laundry equipment, and it was in the uh, 80s, we were expanding our business rapidly because we were making jeans in Juarez and all over Mexico. We had 850 employees in El Paso and laundries were enormous. We made stonewashed jeans and colored jeans and beat up jeans and Levi had the finest equipment ever made to um, use to destroy jeans and stonewash them and pout wash them. But their business was getting down a little bit and they had two huge plants and they needed to sell their inventory of equipment, sewing and laundry and every other kind of equipment. We went up there to bid on the equipment and spent about a half a million dollars and bought equipment that was worth between two and three million, all on auction. And after that, we had uh, huge increases in volume for Action West because we were now totally vertical. We owned the land, we owned the buildings, we owned the machines. The workers worked for us either in Mexico and the U.S. And now we had the washing equipment to uh, take care of everything. We're totally vertical and on our way to building the bigger and better gene company known as Action West of El Paso and Action West to Mexico. And I needed a pilot to go up there to make the trip happen. And the most highly recommended pilot was Cheetah Bella. After reading all his exploits, I figured he might be okay to fly me to Amarillo and back without a mishap. But at least he's here now, so apparently nothing. <laughs> We're ahead of the game. We're here. All right. And uh, can you talk about some of the, you know, some of your other projects? You know, with that which you can talk about, and you feel comfortable talking about, in terms of your your pilot work. Yeah, I, I started off flying in the military back in 1963, but I was never a commercial, of the um, commissioned officer. So the best job I could get is a flight observer, and the guys let me fly. So. Uh, since then, it progressed on. I bought a wrecked airplane in the 70s, rebuilt it, got my pilot's license, and I've been flying ever since. I've probably flown well over 20,000 hours by now. From Alaska, Central, South America, Caribbean. I uh, flew a push-up in Alaska with C-46s. I've flown helicopters. I've probably got about uh, eight, 9,000 hours helicopters. Agriculture. We did motion picture work for Green Predators, Mono McQuaid, and DC 3s, and Rambo 3, and Raven Hawk. I did some work for Homey, I did some camera work for some ship camera work. And uh, we did search and rescue, air ambulance. So we were kind of uh, pretty well in aviation. I, I also flew Lear Jets. And Falcon fan guns, DC 3, C 46s, Beach 18, DC 6s, Convairs. I've got a little bit of flying and everything, even an A 26 Douglas that we still have. So pretty much rounded out in aviation. You know, talk about the, the climate, you know, of, 
of the you know the seventies of, of El Paso and and you know the Shapiros and you know and the Chagras and and just you know what that was like and what your role was in that. Yeah, it's only if it's beyond the statute of limitations. <laughs> Well, I knew a bunch of the old guys back in the 60s and 70s, and Lee Chagra and Joe and Johnny Searles, and uh, oh, there's a whole bunch of them. All gone. Sid Riverhead. So, uh, Victor Apodaca, he passed away not too long ago. And right. 7 11 88, I was skyjacked and went into a Santa Fe State Prison with convicts. Hey, can you exp expand on that? No, we just finally had to go through the uh, court trial because the Mexico tried to rail on me. We did a 10 day jury trial, and F. Lee Bailey represented me, and David Norval and David Charles. We were acquitted on that. Uh, so that was kind of a big kick in the teeth on that. Santa Fe. Will you tell them about the way you did it? How you got into the prison with a helicopter? Didn't get out? Flew in and flew out. So it did was. They, it, it did was, they handcuff you to the steering? Because he was handcuffed to the control. And with all that happening, would you say you successfully completed your mission? Wow. That's what mattered. Yeah. They made a reservation with them. Yeah, they made a reservation. I had no knowledge of the reservation. How, did, how, did, how does that happen? Mission accomplished. How does that happen, though? How do you find out about that mission? And how do you, you know, how was, what was the mindset on that, Cheetah, for you to say, all right. Well, I got, I got called up to fly a real estate mission. Back in the 80s, a lot of people were buying these ranches and stuff like that. Lady called me and acted as a representative for a real estate company, and they wanted to fly over a ranch in northeastern New Mexico. And I was to pick her up in Santa Fe. And apparently, she was a skyjacker. So. You know what? What brought you to El Paso? You know, and, and, and why you uh, stayed stayed ever since? Yeah, the, the army pretty much brought me here back in 1962. I got discharged out of Fort Bliss in 1965, and I just hung around for a little while. So I'm still here hanging around. Well, El Paso's kind of a layback town. Nothing gets done in a hurry no matter where you go. And the word manana means for whatever purpose it's not going to happen today. It could be eons from now or ice ages or anything else. But just kind of a layback operation. And what, what role? It changed a lot. It used to be known as the land of manana, but still later is. on it uh, became one of the most dynamic cities in America for the industry that I was in, which was jeans and apparel and uh, high fashion laundry operations. And what do you, what role does Quietus play in all this? You know, culturally, even if it's culturally, if it's a mindset, if whatever. Yeah. I did I did work for the Mexican government, the Mexican Secret Service, and then, and then private contractors throughout Mexico. We did mining exploration. We even did search and rescue, trying to find them. some hostages that were being held. There's a lot of little efforts that were going on. I found some, some federales that were lost in the desert for days. I found wrecked airplanes down, uh, down there. I brought bodies out for multimillionaires that got killed in plane wrecks, and I rescued some that were still alive. So I got about 40 years working on in Mexico. It's just kind of a funny country if you doing something that they like, they let you do whatever you want to do. And if exactly. You don't, they just treat that's, you like... That's the way they were. If they liked you in Mexico, they were incredibly great. You could get everything done. And I was lucky that I had uh, legally won every case I ever had. The lawyers were great and the laws in Mexico were very favorable for American companies coming in. We, and even, it, we even flew one of your competitors around, Peter Dewan. 
Okay. I knew him very well. Yeah, I knew Peter Robson. He, he owned Billy the Kid. Yeah, he he bought Billy the Kid from to, John Prendergast. He used to fly him up to Teterboro, New, uh, New Jersey, and out to San Diego to his place and stuff. Right. Yeah. I knew him very well through John Prendergast. Okay, who was this? Prendergast. John Prendergast was the head of Billy the Kid. He sold it to Peter Duan, who was from India. Is that correct? And he bought the company and was operating it. And he did well for a while. Then he sold out to Calvin Klein, which became one of the largest, most successful gene companies in the world. Well, there was also a story about his bookkeeper stole a bunch of money. I'm sorry? Uh, Peter's bookkeeper stole a bunch of money from the millions. So. She did. Yeah, so she basically didn't... put him out of business. Yeah. And he went bankrupt. Wow. He didn't get the nickname by accident. I got the nickname from Racing. They thought I was cheating and I considered that to be a compliment. As long as you didn't cheat on your wife. <laughs> if you could kick their ass in racing and they said you were cheating, then you were doing well. <laughs> well who gave you the, the nickname again? I kind of took it on myself. Some of the little kids used to call me that back in Chicago. He paid you did on his car. And why why did you take that upon yourself? I thought it was a compliment after a while. I could I could take the vehicles and tune them up better and make them run a little faster, and we'd kick some ass. So. You know, talk uh, some of some of your uh, your, your stories of, of cheating death that you were telling. Well, I don't want to get a lot of detail, in, 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 and I'm holding back a lot on that, and and that's strictly for my book rights and, and stuff. But there's episodes that. Probably happened to me back from 1948 to present, to present, to where I, uh, I come about one heartbeat away from being killed, from being run over by cars and all that down. I almost drowned a little kid once. And I got in a car wreck and had to pull me out of a snowbank after I almost froze to death. A motorcycle wrecks, and airplane wrecks, and stomped by cattle, and helicopter wrecks. And being, being shot up in a prison break, which it never actually hit me, though. But that was a pretty close call. They sure tried to. Can you prison break from where? Santa Fe. Same one. The same one? What yeah. do you, what do you, what do you, yeah, what do you, 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 what do well, they, they filed charges on me for uh, three counts of aiding in an escape, one count of conspiring to aid in an escape. And during the process of the trial, we went through a 10-day trial with Effie Bailey. I was acquitted on everything. Who, who are some of the... Talk about George Carlin. Well, we had George here once. We had a layover, and we stopped at Santa Retreat, so we took him in my helicopter and brought him out here to the ranch. We got him. Homestead, and we got him to pet the tiger. And George autographed got that picture personally. But I flew him from California up towards Upper Michigan and throughout the central United States and southeastern Mississippi and South Texas and Dallas. Just, just about everywhere. We a pretty big circle. George, George is a pretty neat guy. Also flew Tommy Lee Jones around a little bit. And I'd fly him back and forth to his garage or ranch up in San Antonio. He used to come here to play polo. Mm -hmm. Tommy Lee Jones used to play polo here oh. in New Mexico. Yeah. And, uh, he was good. Who else did I fly around? Well, I flew around Texas Attorney General. I flew around Richard Gerhardt when he was Speaker of the House. I flew around Sylvester Reyes. Just so many of them. I forget half of them. Do you remember them? Carol? Okay. Flew the commanding general of Beaumont around and stuff, the medical staff around. And uh, so we flew different law enforcement missions for Lincoln County, and Don Anna County, Otero County, Sierra County, for all the other counties. There's old Billy the Kid country. Yeah. The Lincoln Wars. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we did 
with the helicopter and set the horse back. Would you say your life has not been dull? Not a no, so. going away from the dull parts. <laughs> <laughs> Say that aviation is 99% boring and 1% hysterical. Uh, right. I think that the tables are a little bit off in my case. We've got a lot more hysterical flight hours than, than boring. On June 1st of 1990, we just had an engine on, there's no place to auto rotate to, so you go to the side of the mountain. And how, what was the purpose? I mean, how did, why did you crash? What, what happened? The engine failed on me. There was a, a repair down to the compressor by repair shop that, was, that wasn't that was up to standard. So it shut the engine off just as I was taking, taking off, I was leaving from a, a, a pinnacle point on the side of the mountain. Yeah, talk about, talk about what, what school did you, did you go to? I went to uh, Isleta High School. Uh, Graduated from there, went to New Mexico Military Institute, graduated from there with a Bachelor of Arts. Then I was an Army officer, Airborne Ranger, for three years. Then I went to law school, the University of Texas. And when did you graduate from? from In 1962. Okay. And then what did you, did you come back to El Paso? When oh yeah, I, I came back to El Paso. I set up my law practice with Sam Paxson. Our law firm was Paxson and Santi Stellan. And we started practicing law. Then uh, I got Sam appointed a judge. And so it became Santi Stellan, Martin, uh, and, and Juarez. And uh, I, I just been practicing law. Then I was elected to the Senate to the House of Representatives first. I was elected to the House of Representatives in 1964 uh, and then to the Senate in 70. And then, and then I was defeated in my re-election in 24 years later. I was elected president pro tempore, which is the third ranking member of the, uh, of the Texas le le legislature. You see, it, it, it's it's a governor, the lieutenant governor, and then the president pro tempore of the Senate. <clears throat> and I was elected president pro tempore of the Senate in 1906, 1976. <clears throat> and uh, so, in case the, the governor died and the, the governor, the lieutenant governor, I, I would be governor. And I had a, a governor for a day. That's a big festivity in Austin. And uh, the Shapiros went with me. There was an airplane, a uh, uh, 12-seater jet that flew me from Austin to El Paso on that day. And then we had a, a rally here too. We had a big rally with, with the, we walked under the saber swords and in Austin and I made a speech and all the people were there, and, and then we flew down here, and we had another rally here, and, and the Shapiro's were with me. And so were a lot of my other friends, too. What was happening with uh, the unions and, and FIDA and... Well, I was... Do you want to detail with, with that? I was a member of the board of directors of FIDA. And uh, <clears throat> I served with Willie FIDA and, and other members for about four years. And uh, and it was very interesting. It was, and it was a very big conflict between the fighter workers and and my op 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 opposition when I was elected. But they came my way. We, uh, I figured they're all Mexicans, so I don't care what 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 I am. They're not going to go for no Anglo. And so I was right. When it came to um Siding with 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 Farrah, with Julia on that, were there any ramifications on on, on you and your practice? Oh on, yeah, on it, it, it hurt me. It, it, hurt. it hurt sure because Willie was uh, against the the the, 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 the 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 strike. He was against the the fair worker, 
in 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 his opinion, he was for the fair worker. Yeah, he was. He 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 helped him, the, the fair worker in his opinion, but the the machinery, the the campaign machinery went against him. And Chuck, so, you, were you on the board of directors? Yes. Did you know that? I did not. That's yeah. very important. Yeah, I was a member of the board of directors. That's what I said earlier. And uh, Tati, one time, he had his partner, Wesley Morton. Yeah, Wesley Morton. It was good. I told him he became an attorney without going to law school. Yeah. Self-taught. Yeah. And uh, Tati said to Wesley, you can correct the story if you want to, but Tati said to Wesley, I'd like to uh, own a bank. So Wesley said, that's a good idea. How do we do it? And Wesley said, you get a charter and we'll, you'll own a bank. Yeah. And we'll get partners who are our best friends. So I got, I got a bank. So he got his bank. I got a bank, yeah. And the partners were Tati, <clears throat> Myself. I passed I passed the resolution. What, Wesley Martin. Ted Pruitt. Seb Abraham. Seb Abraham. And um, Lama. Uh, and Walter Klein. Yeah. That part of it. He was the managing He was the president. President of Sierra Vista Bank. Yeah. Well because Tati said you want him back. And he got it. I got it. It took a long time. About six weeks. So yeah, it, 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 right. it, that's right. It's a charter. It just reaffirms what we were talking about earlier. Right? Paxson and Santiago Esteban was the firm's name. Okay. Yeah. And, and uh, how do you go about? Oh, Jimmy Salome was you know, How do you? What's the? Well, how does that happen? That is what I mean, uh, how well, do you go about? There's a bank commission in, in 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 Texas, and you walk up to them and, and you say, "I want a bank," and and then the set it back me up, said, "Yeah, he deserves a bank." And and we got a bank. They pass it. It, it, it doesn't have legislation. It, it's the banking commission passed. All they needed was backers, and that's right. All of us were backers. Yeah, exactly. Pick up a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paper, yeah. myself, Wesley Martin. Yeah, and Tati and was Wesley totally was, involved. And I appointed Wesley as the president. And how long did that endeavor last? With the bank. It, it lasted. It lasted about four years or so. Five years, right. and, and then and then it, it, the 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 bank went under because no, well, uh, our bank didn't go on. We sold to uh, Coronado, yeah, Jack Rich, and we got a we made a profit. We yeah, got we, all our money all, out. We we all got our money out. Yeah, we, we didn't lose anything, but a four year run of earnings. But yeah. the bank we sold out to went under in less than one year. Yeah, I guess Coronado so. Bank. Yeah.